Chapter 11 is about uh, the muscular system. Uh, so it has two different parts, axial and appendicular. Uh, and in the beginning, there is some uh, general information about the um, muscular system. Um, so there is a classification based on the way that the muscle fibers uh, run. Uh, the first one is called parallel muscles. These are the uh, type of muscles that the fibers run uh, parallel to the long axis of the muscle. So this is the long axis and they run parallel to that. Um, so there are different types. Um, one is called a, just a general parallel muscle. Um, so an example of that is the biceps muscle that is in the uh, arm. Uh, another one is called um, parallel muscles with the tendinous brands and here is that um, uh, it has these uh, tendons um, that um, the muscles fibers attached to it. An example of that is in the uh, rectus abdominis and the abdomen. And the other one is the wrapping muscle and this muscle is located in the forearm area. Uh, the second type uh, is called a convergent muscle. So here is that there is a uh, muscle fibers start from a broad area and then it converge uh, to the tendon in a small area. An example of that is the uh, pectoralis muscle in the chest. Then is uh, another classification is called panate muscle and here is the, the muscle fibers runs uh, oblique. Uh, to the tendon. Uh, so uh, one of them is called unipanate muscle that is only on one side. An example is a muscle that is in the forearm. Uh, the other one is called bipanate. So these are coming from the two sides. The, the, the muscle fibers are coming from the two sides. Uh, and that uh, can be in the uh, thigh area. An example of that, uh, multi-panate is that uh, the fibers are coming from multiple different areas. So like this you can see it. An example is in the deltoid, so the shoulder muscle here. And the last one is called circular muscle. It is uh, uh, covering the opening of uh, body parts like mouth, eyes, um, anal area and genital area. Uh, so uh, it, when it contracts, it closes the area, and when it relaxes, it opens the area. Uh, there is a different classification based on lovers. Uh, so uh, the lover is a rigid uh, bar that uh, moves on a fixed point, and that fixed point is called fulcrum uh, when a force is applied to it. So there is different uh, classification. The first class of lever is um, here is the, the fulcrum is in the middle and you have here uh, the load or the weight and you have the applied force. An example of that is in the neck area that when the uh, neck muscles in the back contracts, uh, the head is elevated. The second class of levers is that uh, the load is in the middle and the fulcrum is on one side and the applied forces on the opposite side. An example of that is in the uh, ankle area that uh, uh, the posterior leg muscles contract and uh, then uh, you know there is a movement in the um, foot area so the body weight can be elevated against gravity. And the third one is called uh, the third class levers and here is that uh, applied forces in the middle, uh, fulcrum is on one side and load is on the opposite side and this is the most common type of, of uh, levers that you can see uh, in the body. An example of that is the biceps muscle in the arm. Uh, the naming of the muscles, there is a big section of that, so uh, I will not go over it. Uh, if you are not familiar with the naming, um, if you want to memorize uh, the actual uh, meaning of each muscle, then you can go and look at over the textbook. 
uh, it's not very useful for me to go over it. And uh, another topic is, is the division of the muscles. So we divide them in the axial and uh, appendicular. So similar to the skeletal uh, bones, uh, the same idea here in the skeletal muscle. Uh, for the axial muscles, so they, these muscles are located in the um, head area, so face, and the rest of the skull, the neck, uh, the thoracic cavity, abdomen, pelvis, and the back. So that's about 60% of the muscles are located here, and there's different movements um, are related to that. For example, movement of the head, neck, abdomen, movement during uh, breathing, all of them relate to axial muscle. Uh, the, the other 40% depends on the appendicular muscles, and these are the uh, shoulder and hip girdles, and also the limbs, upper and lower limbs. So let's start with the uh, axial uh, muscles. So the first one is the uh, muscles of the facial expression. Uh, so here is the muscles of facial expression. You can see there's a lot of them, so let me go over them uh, one by one. You can see some of them are in gray, so that means that these are not muscles of the facial expression. The one that the, the black ones are the muscles of facial expression. Uh, so uh, I will not uh, discuss uh, the origin and insertion of the muscles. I will discuss the location, uh, sometimes the group of the muscle, and also the function. So these are the two ma major important things to know. Uh, other than the name, uh, the group, and uh, more importantly, the function of each muscle. Uh, so this is the occipital frontalis muscle. This one that you can see, part of it is in the uh, frontal area. The other part is in the occipital area. They are connected by uh, to each other by uh, this um, connective tissue that's called aponeurosis. Uh, so epicranial, this is the exact name, epicranial aponeurosis, aponeurosis connecting two uh, different muscles together. Uh, so the function of the frontalis, belly of the occipital frontalis is to uh, raise the eyebrows. The other one is called procerius, and then there's nasalis. These two are important for movement of the nose. Uh, then is orbicularis oculi. This is one of those circular muscles that is responsible for closing the eye. Uh, you have some other muscles here. This is levator labi superioris. So look at the name. It's very obvious, the name. So that's elevating the upper lip. Uh, this one that you see here, um, that is levator anguli oris. That is elevating the angle of the mouth zygomatic minor and zygomatic major. So these four muscles are uh, participating in the smile. Uh, you also have um, um, here orbicularis oris. So this is closing the mouth. See the same muscle here. This is orbicularis, orbicularis oculi for the eye, orbicularis oris uh, for the mouth. Uh, some muscles that you have that are similar to these ones but on opposite uh, direction. So this is the depressor labi inferioris. That is uh, depressing or uh, moving the lip downward. And this is the depressor anguli oris that is uh, moving the corner of the mouth downward. Uh, this muscle is called the vaccinator and that is tensing up the cheek. Uh, compressing the cheek, and that is uh, important for um, during the swallowing uh, when the food is uh, moving toward the cheek. So this this muscle contracts, and this the food goes back uh, toward the teeth, so it can be chewed properly. Um, there's also another muscle here that's the temporoparietalis. Uh, that's not that important for the function of it because in some people only uh, it's working in most people it will not work. That is for moving uh, the uh, ear. So like uh, Mr. Bean the, that he can do as move as ears move. Uh, this is the muscle, but most people cannot do that. 
Uh, so you have some other muscles, but as I said before, these muscles are not part of the muscles of facial expression. So you have the temporalis, this one, the masseter is here, the sternocleidomastoid here, homohyoid is there, and the trapezius muscle. These ones that you see, these ones, these are called scalenes. And I have it in a different slide, but um, until then, just know it's not written there, it's not labeled, it's called scalenes. Um, so here again, uh, those uh, muscles from the frontal view, it's not much new information there, it's just a couple of new muscles, like three different new muscles are here. So this is the uh, frontal uh, belly of the occipital frontalis. Uh, this is the corrugator supercellus. This is a new muscle here, and this is for frowning. Uh, this is the temporalis. Uh, so uh, see, this is the deeper muscle. This is temporoparietalis. Uh, so this is not a muscle of facial expression. This is for uh, chewing. Orbicularis oculi, the nasalis, zygomatic minor and major, these two. Uh, orbicularis uh, oculi, this one. Uh, then is, this is a new one, so Rizurias. Rizurias also moves the corner of the mouth toward the uh, ear, so it's important for a smiling. And platysma, this is another new muscle here, so this is a flat muscle and that brings the mandible downward and also uh, compresses or tenses up uh, the, the neck area. Uh, mentalis is uh, for uh, moving the chin. And um, these are the cartilage of the thyroid, uh, the thyroid cartilage for the larynx, uh, not part of the muscle of facial expression. Epical aponeurosis, uh, temporoparietalis, I mentioned it before. Procerius, I talked about it before, it's about the nose. Laveta labi superioris. Lavator anguli oris, so these are for the mouth, for smiling, masseter, part of the chewing muscles, vaccinator um, for um, compressing the cheek, the pressor anguli oris, and the pressor labi inferioris. Uh, those are the two muscles to bring down the lips. Uh, Sternocleidomastoid, uh, this is not part of the facial muscle, but know the names for now. I will tell you the function later. And um, uh, the trapezius muscle is actually mainly a back muscle. This is a clavicle. And the platysma, which is this muscle, is cut here, so you can see these deeper muscles. These are the muscles of the eyes uh, that is under your control, so there are six of them. Uh, four of them are uh, called rectus and two of them are called oblique. Uh, so uh, this one is called superior rectus and uh, this is the one that, that is uh, responsible for uh, moving the eye upward. So this one. Um, and then it's called the lateral rectus uh, moving the eye away from the nose. Um, so uh, it's hard to see it in this view because it shows medial view. Uh, this is the opposite one, that's medial rectus, that moving the eye, eye toward the nose. So if you think that this area is the nose, so eye moves medially. And also this muscle, this is from the side view. Uh, another one is called inferior rectus, that is moving the eye downward. And this is the inferior rectus. Uh, so these are the four recti muscles, and then there's two oblique muscles. One is called superior oblique, uh, this one. Uh, that is moving the eye inward and downward. That's called entorsion. Entorsion. Um, so this is the uh, superior oblique. And also this is the inferior oblique. Uh, so this is moving the eye upward and outward. So that's called extorsion. Extorsion. And um, uh, a little bit difficult to see that. Uh, uh, this muscle, so the inferior oblique is around this area, it's a little bit difficult to see it from this view. These are the muscles of mastication, so uh, three of these muscles cause clo closure of the jaw, so this is the temporalis, this is the masseter, and this is called medial pterygoid. These three muscles close the jaw. One muscle opens the jaw, 
and uh, this is called lateral pterygoid. Lateral pterygoid opens the jaw, and these three other muscles close the jaw. Um, then also there is two other muscles that uh, that is moving the jaw, the jaw side to side, and this is called the pterygoid muscle. So lateral and medial also move the jaw side to side. Um, here is the muscles of the tongue. So there is four different muscles are here. Um, this is the mandible, and this area is called geno, and this is the bone is called hyoid bone. Uh, so one muscle is called genioglossus, this muscle, um, and this is the one that is causing um, protrusion of the uh, tongue and also depression of the tongue. Another muscle is called hyoglossus, that is called retraction of the tongue and also depression of the tongue. The third one is called styloglossus, and this is causing a retraction of the tongue and also elevation of the tongue. And the fourth one is called palatoglossus, that is um, elevating the tongue also. This is another muscle. This one is not labeled here, that's called geniohyoid. This is a muscle of the floor of the uh, mouth. Muscle of the floor of the mouth. Uh, then there are some muscles for pharynx and larynx, and this is a couple of muscles that are uh, causing elevation of the soft palate. This is called tensor valley palatini, and this is called lavator valley palatini. So both of them cause elevation of the soft palate. Uh, this muscle causes elevation of the larynx, and so it's important during swallowing. And these three muscles are the pharyngeal constrictors, so it's narrowing um, the pharynx is important for swallowing also. Uh, so this is superior one, middle one, and inferior one. Uh, this is the muscles of the anterior neck. So if you can see here, the hyoid bone is not articulated with any other bone, but so many different muscles are um, attached to it. So an easy way to remember the function of these muscles, the muscles that are above the hyoid bone causing elevation of the hyoid bone, uh, and the muscles that are below uh, the hyoid bone is causing depression of the hyoid bone, and usually depression or lowering the larynx as, as well. Uh, so let's talk about these muscles from deep to superficial. Uh, you have the geniohyoid, so this is the genio of the mandible and this is the hyoid bone, geniohyoid, and this one is called myelohyoid, so my, myelo is this side of the mandible, so myelohyoid, and then superficial to that you have this uh, digastric um, muscle. And also you have the stylohyoid muscle. You have the styloglossus muscle, and you have the stylohyoid muscle as well. Uh, for the muscles below the hyoid bone, so uh, this is called the homohyoid, that is connecting the clavicle all the way to hyoid bone. Uh, this is called the sternohyoid, that's connecting the sternum to hyoid. So these are more superficial muscles, and the deeper ones, um, yeah, this is called the, this one, or this one this is called a sternothyroid that is going from a sternum to thyroid and thyrohyoid from thyroid goes to hyoid bone. Also you see this muscle, a sternocleidomastoid that is connecting the uh, mastoid process of the temporal bone to the sternum and clavicle. Uh, so this one, if both of them contract at the same time, uh, it causes um, flexion of the uh, head, so this is like saying yes. And if one of them contracts, the head is moving to the opposite side. So, so if the, both of them are contracting alternatively, then uh, it's the same as saying no. Uh, so both, uh, once again, both of them at the same time uh, is flexing of the neck, and one of them contracts, moves the head to the opposite side. Uh, these are the muscles of the vertebral column. So there are some muscles attached to the posterior part of the vertebrae and some are attached to the anterior part of the vertebrae. 
the ones that are uh, uh, attached to the back of the vertebrae, these are called the spinal extensors or erector spinae muscles. This is important for posture and body position, so that's causing extension of the spine. There's two different layers, one is called superficial layer and the other one is the deep layer. Superficial layer is made of three muscles, medial to lateral, one is called the spinalis, the other one is called longissimus, and the third one is called ilicostalis, so medial to lateral. Then is that the deep uh, uh, layer uh, is made of uh, two big muscles and three smaller muscles. So some spinalis and multifidus is the bigger muscles. I will show it to you in the next slide. And then you have the three smaller muscles that I can show you to you here in this uh, image. So one is called the interspinous uh, uh, muscle, this one. Uh, so the flexion of this uh, causing uh, extension of the uh, spine. So contraction of this muscle causes extension of the spine. Uh, this is called uh, rotators that is connecting the spinous process to transverse process of vertebra and um, that is called uh, rotation of the vertebrae and this uh, one, this muscle is called intertransversary eye and this is connecting the two um, transverse processes of the vertebrae. You have a different image in your textbook, it's a little bit complicated, this image is uh, very simple and straightforward, so I put this image. You can also look at that image in from your textbook. So let's look at those muscles. So there's three of them that I said is, is superficial. This is called uh, spinalis. And uh, when the, this muscle contracts, it can cause extension of the uh, vertebrae. Then as you have the second uh, muscle lateral to the spinalis, this is called longissimus. And this is longissimus thoracis, cervices, and capitis. And uh, if both of them contract at the same time, cause extension. And if one of them contracts, uh, that can cause flexion of the spine uh, to that side. Uh, then is lateral to longissimus, you have the iliocostalis. So you have iliocostalis lamborum, so from the lumbar area, iliocostalis thoracis, and iliocostalis cervices. So a flexion of this muscle uh, cause, um, or I should say a con contraction of this muscle uh, causes both of them together if they, they contract at the same time, it can cause extension of the uh, vertebral column. The deeper muscles, some spinalis, so you have some spinalis thoracis, cervices, and capitis. And when they contract, that uh, both of them contract, that will cause uh, extension of the spine, and then one of them contracts cause rotation. Um, uh, depends also depends on the location. Um, this may this part may elevate the, the the rib area, and this stabilizes the rib area, and this area will cause depression of the rib. So it depends on the area, but the main function to know for some spinalis is uh, extension of the uh, spine or vertebral column. Um, you also have the multifeathers. Uh, this muscle, this is also cause extension of the uh, spine. And then you have a couple of other muscles there that I put it in gray because these are not erector spiny muscles. One is called quadratus lamborum, and uh, this is cause flexion of the uh, the spine and also this is external oblique uh, that I will come back to this I will show it to you and that's also uh, an abdominal muscle. So another uh, uh, muscle, muscle group is called flex uh, uh, spine or spinal flexors and uh, the couple of muscles here one is called longus, longus capitis uh, if both of them contract, it will cause flexion of the spine and in that area is flexion of the neck and if one of them contracts, it will cause um, flexion to that side. And also you have the uh, longest coli and this is the muscles that can cause uh, flexion of the uh, spine in that area. 
Another uh, spinal flexors uh, is the quadratus lamborum, which I showed you in the previous image, and again, same idea here, uh, causing flexion of the spine. Uh, some other muscles that uh, was not showing there properly, uh, so I added here this image. Uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, spinous muscles. So spinous muscle cause extension of the uh, spine in that area, and uh, this is a more superficial muscle. If you deeper to that, if you can uh, you know, dissect this area and deeper to that, you have some spinalis capitis muscle, which is again an erector spinae muscle. And these three muscles that you see, these are also erector spinae muscles. So it's a spinalis, longissimus, and illocostalis. So it's just the same muscles, but they are different uh, view. Okay, and uh, you also have um, uh, these muscles that you can see, these are called serratus posterior inferior that brings the uh, ribs uh, downward, and these muscles that are not labeled here, you can write it down if you want. It's called serratus uh, posterior uh, superior. Okay, um, so uh, just the same muscles groups, but a little bit different location, and this one causing elevation of the ribs. Okay, so this one caused depression of the ribs, and this was elevation of the ribs. Serratus posterior superior. Also, you can see some of the abdominal muscles here. So this is the internal oblique, and this is the external oblique, and I will come back to those muscles later. Uh, these are the muscles of the chest and the uh, neck area. So the best way to talk about this is, um, uh, these are the muscles of respiration. So in the respiration, you have two parts. Uh, one is inhalation. Uh, the other one is expiration. Inhalation, the air goes inside the uh, chest, uh, oxygen goes inside, you breathe in, and in expiration, you breathe out, so carbon dioxide is leaving the body. Uh, so the, um, the most important, one of the most important muscles uh, for uh, uh, inspiration is called external intercostal. And if you can look at it, look at the direction, it's moving downward and inward down and in. Okay, so this is one of the most important muscles of inspiration. Another muscle that is activated during exercise or the disease, these are called scaling muscles. So there is three of them and that can cause elevation of the ribs. And this is the muscle that I talked about it in the beginning of the lecture as well. Uh, so uh, these two are for in inspiration and there are some muscles that are for expiration. Okay. So this one is called internal intercostal. Uh, so look at the direction, it's moving down and out. Down and out, okay? Um, so this is the uh, uh, internal intercostal, so same muscles for the inside you can see. Uh, another muscle is called transversus thoracis. This is also muscles of expiration. And this is called innermost, so that is the deepest layer of the chest, innermost intercostal. And the lower part, these muscles are called subcostal. So these are the muscles of um, expiration or breathing out. Uh, so these are the muscles of the abdomen here. Uh, if you look at it, so the, the one is called external oblique, uh, which is the same direction as the external intercostal. So going downward and inward, and it. Um, uh, finally, this uh, this is a fascia here in this area, um, so it goes in this area. And uh, uh, deeper to that, you have the rectus abdominis. This is the rectus abdominis. These are called tendinous in inscriptions. And uh, this is the six-pack muscle, uh, which I have. Um, okay. Uh, so, um, and lateral to, to that, you have... Uh, uh, another muscle here, this is the internal oblique muscle, okay? Um, so the function of these muscles are a little bit different. Um, so external oblique, uh, rectus abdominis, and uh, internal uh, oblique, they all cause depression of the uh, ribs. It can cause 
flexion of the spine and also compression of the um, abdomen. Uh, so all three of them together. So, um, but um, there is also called another muscle that's called transversus abdominis and that only causes compression. Um, so it does not cause depression of the uh, ribs or flexion of the spine. It has only one function. Uh, if you cut the abdomen in this area, you can see the rectus abdominis. They are connected in the middle by linea alba, not just like alba, linea alba. And here you have the, the three different muscles. You have the external oblique, and then you have the, the internal oblique, and you have the transversus abdominis. Okay, so these three muscles are there. And these are the muscles of the erector spinae muscles. These are the, these muscles. And um, uh, as I said before, I have the six pack muscle, but it is covered by one pack of fat. Just don't want anybody to become jealous. That's why I, I put a little bit of fat on top of that. Uh, okay, so the important muscle here, this is the muscle. So this is the diaphragm. This is the primary muscles of inspiration so when you breathe in this muscles contract and the uh, size of the thoracic cavity increase when the size of the thoracic cavity increase um, the pressure inside the thoracic cavity become negative the pressure from outside is positive so air goes inside the thoracic cavity and then oxygen goes there so uh, if this muscle is paralyzed the person cannot uh, survive so very important muscles. And also you can see other muscles that we talked about it. Um, so these are the muscles of the abdomen and the chest wall and the back. You can see it uh, around this area. This is uh, the muscles of the pelvic floor. So for male and female, they are very, very similar muscles. Um, it can be divided into two, two different uh, triangles. This is the anterior triangle and this is the uh, posterior uh, triangle. So the anterior triangle is called the urogenital and the posterior triangle is called the anal uh, triangle. So there's some names there. Um, in the anterior uh, triangle um, or urogenital uh, triangle you have two different layers. One you have superficial layer and the other one is the deep layer. So this muscle is called iscocavernosus muscle and this one is called the bulbo spongiosus muscle. Uh, these are uh, con these muscles contain erectile tissue. So uh, during sexual activity, uh, these muscles contract. It can cause uh, erection of the clitoris, which is located around this area. Uh, also, bulbous spongiosus cause narrowing of the vaginal opening. Um, outside of the sexual activity, does not have that much function. And uh, there is another muscle here. This is called a superficial uh, transverse perineal muscle. So this is the ischial spine, and this is the central tendon of the perineum. So this muscle is connecting those two areas. This is just for a stabilization of the pelvis, pelvic floor. Uh, here in the deep um, layer, you have two muscles. One is called external urethral sphincter that is around the urethra and here is you can consciously control your, uh, the urination so when the bladder is full the signals are sent to the brain and then uh, the internal uh, urethral sphincter muscles that are smooth muscles they relax but the external one is under conscious control so initially during a very young uh, age uh, during uh, you know, infancy uh, in the toddler ears, uh, these muscles are not working properly, so they, that's why uh, the baby urinates. But later on, uh, it comes under conscious control, so they are normally contracted, and only when the time and the location is appropriate, then the, those muscles uh, relax and uh, urination can, urine can come out and urination can take place. And then is the deep transverse perineal muscle, and again, this muscle is also for a stabilization of the pelvis. Uh, then is you have the um, anal triangle, so here you have the 
uh, levator ani that is causing elevation of the anus. This is during defecation. Uh, so there's two muscles here. One is called pubic oxygen. So this is very deep. So starting from pubis, this is this this is pubic bone. This area coming all the way to here uh, to to coccyx. And this is another one. It's called iliac oxygen. And this is coming from ileum all the way to the um, coccyx. Okay. So these two muscles are uh, making uh, levator ani muscle. Then is external anal sphincter, so same idea that I talked about the uh, urethral sphincter, you have the same idea here. So you have the internal anal sphincter, which is a smooth muscle, and external one, which is the under conscious control. Uh, you also have some other muscle, one is called CGS, this is a pelvic floor muscle, and gluteus maximus, uh, which is important for the uh, movement of the hips. So we will talk about that uh, in a few minutes. Uh, for the male uh, pelvic floor, the, everything is the same thing. So there is nothing new there. Uh, these two muscles, Escucavernosus and bulbous spongiosus, both of them are important for erection. Also, bulbous spongiosus is uh, wrapping around uh, urethra, so it's important for rejection of urine and ejection of semen in men, but the rest is uh, all, all the same thing. Uh, here is the uh, muscles of appendicular system, so this is just a um, different topic uh, that we can start discussing he here. Um, so um, you can see a couple of the axial and skeletal muscles are there too, the platysma, sternocleidomastoid, uh, don't worry about them because we already talked about that. So let's talk about the appendicular muscles. So you have here the superficial muscles and here you have the deeper ones. For the superficial one, this is the deltoid muscle. And the deltoid uh, muscle is uh, responsible uh, for um, uh, flexion, uh, abduction, and extension of the shoulder joint, okay? Flexion, extension, and AB or abduction. Uh, pectoralis major is responsible for flexion, internal rotation or medial rotation, and adduction of the shoulder joint. Serratus anterior is important for moving um, uh, the um, glenoid cavity upward, so I will show you to you how does it work, okay? The deeper layer, if you remove the pectoralis muscle and the, the deltoid muscle, then you can see deeper muscle, muscles, one of them is called pectoralis minor. Uh, so this pectoralis minor is important for uh, protraction uh, of the shoulder joint, okay, protraction. Uh, and here you also have the uh, subclavius muscle um, that is for the depression um, pector and pectoralis minor is also for the depression of the uh, shoulder joint. So, um, and then you have the um, some other muscles at the background. You have the subscapularis muscles. Uh, you, ha you have the teres major and minor is here, but I will discuss these muscles later on, okay? You have the coracobrachialis and biceps muscles. These two muscles are, we will discuss it later, so this is not in the chest wall, it is uh, for movement of the shoulder. Um, okay, so we discussed these two muscles already, so this is, uh, um, this is a, uh, located, this muscle is called subscapularis that is located in the, in the subscapular fossa of um, scapula, which is the anterior surfaces of the scapula, anterior surface. And this muscle causes uh, internal rota uh, rotation or medial rotation of the um, shoulder. Um, you also have the teres major here, but I will discuss teres major later, okay, when I show you the back muscles. Uh, you have the coracobrachialis muscle, uh, 
and this muscle cause AD action and flexion of the uh, shoulder joint and this is the biceps muscle and that can cause uh, flexion of the shoulder but also cause flexion of the uh, elbow some of these muscles also have some other functions but I'm just giving you the big one these are the muscles of the back so one of them is called trapezius muscle really big muscle superficial muscle of the back it depends on which part contracts it can cause extension of the neck elevation of the neck depression of the I mean elevation of the shoulder not the, the neck elevation of the shoulder depression of the shoulder or uh, retraction of the shoulder retraction of the shoulder means moving the shoulder backward so it depends on, on which part contracts you have different movements and this one is called levator scapulae so obviously the name is obvious it can cause elevation of the scapula these two um, muscles are called rhomboid minor and major that are attached to the uh, medial border of the scapula and that can cause adduction of the scapula toward the spine and this is the serratus anterior and uh, the very important function of this is cause uh, movement of the glenoid cavity upward so uh, in that case if you want to reach a shelf or if you want to raise your hand to ask a question then you, you're using the serratus anterior muscle Some other muscles that are here, uh, this is called the supraspinatus muscle, okay, the so supraspinatus muscle cause abduction of the shoulder, similar to deltoid. Deltoid is a bigger muscle, supraspinatus is a smaller muscle. Both of them together cause um, abduction of the shoulder joint. Uh, so this is located in the supraspinous fossa, if you remember uh, uh, the scapula. And this muscle is called infraspinatus muscle, and that is located in the infraspinous uh, fossa of scapula. This muscle with uh, uh, teres minor, both of them cause uh, external rotation um, or lateral rotation of the shoulder joint. External or lateral rotation. And this is called teres major. Teres major has the same function as latissimus dorsi, so it's really big muscle here, it's a superficial muscle. Um, so both of them will cause extension of the shoulder joint, adduction, and internal rotation. Extension, adduction, and internal rotation. For example, if you want to scratch your back, so you have to use these muscles. Now the muscles that are affecting uh, the elbow, uh, so one is the biceps muscle here, uh, the other one is called brachialis, the third one is called brachioradialis. These three muscles are causing flexion of the elbow. You also have these um, uh, other, the, the triceps muscles here, and that is not uh, related to the flexion of the elbow. Okay, I will show you in a different, different uh, image here. Um, and uh, these muscles are causing uh, or affecting the wrist area. So uh, this is called the name is very obvi obvious. So flexor carpi radialis. So this uh, this cause flexion of the wrist. This is called palmaris longus in the middle, and this one is called flexor carpi ulnaris that is located medially. Ulnaris located medially, radialis located laterally and they will cause flexion of the rest area. So uh, the, ill, the muscles in the forearm has three different layers. So this is the superficial layer. This is a superficial layer. So the medial layer, the muscle that is there is called flexor digitorum superficialis, which is going to the middle digits, okay? And uh, our phalanges. Uh, and uh, that will cause flexion of the uh, you know, uh, uh, hands, or flexion of the fingers, I should say. Uh, so then is the deepest layer, this is two different muscles. One is called flexor pollicis longus. Okay, that's cause flexion of the uh, um, thumb or uh, 
big uh, to, uh, I mean big uh, uh, the thumb uh, are called polis and uh, or the big finger I should say and here is that uh, flexor uh, digitorum profundus that is uh, causing flexion of these uh, four different uh, fingers so if you can look at it um, the muscles that are the muscles that are located on the anterior part of the upper limb they are all flexors they are all flexors so polis once again means a thumb okay These are the muscles that are located in the back of the upper limb. So the triceps muscles, uh, that is the main muscle that can cause extension of the elbow. Also, there's a smaller muscle that's called anconius that uh, can cause extension of the elbow as well. It's helping the triceps muscle. Uh, then the muscles that are uh, located posteriorly um, in the forearm, so one is called extensor carpi ulnaris. This is located medially, and this is called extensor carpi radialis longus. That is located laterally, and extensor digitorum. These three muscles causing extension of the rest area. Rest. Um, okay. So these three muscles. Um, there's also extensor carpi radialis brevis. This is located deeper. You have abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis. These are these muscles are there, but these are not superficial muscles. So the back of the um, forearm also has three different layers. Okay, so this is the superficial layer, uh, and you can also see it in this area. This is the superficial layer. Um, so this is, I mean, this is the extensors and this is the flexors muscles and this is the superficial layer here, it's a superficial layer there. Um, and you can also see the flexor carpi ulnaris on the posterior view, but this is the, uh, this muscle is this one, uh, but this is the one that is uh, causing flexion of the wrist, wrist not extension. Uh, so uh, these three muscles cause of, uh, extension of the wrist, okay? And the second layer, so this is the middle layer, you see the extensor digitorum uh, that uh, goes to uh, these uh, four fingers, okay? And extensor digiti minimi that goes only to the uh, smaller finger, okay, the pinky. So these two muscles are the middle layer, and these, these two muscles cause extension of the fingers. And then the deepest layer, uh, you have extensor indices that goes to the index finger, extensor pollicis longus, uh, and extensor pollicis brevis, and then as you have the abductor pollicis longus, so extensor, Pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and abductor pollicis longus, this one. This one that is not labeled, uh, this is called extensor carpi radialis brevis. Extensor carpi radialis brevis, it's not labeled here. So these um, muscles cause extension um, of the fingers, or cause abduction, depends on the name abduction of the uh, thumb. Also you have uh, some other muscle that's important for supination and pronation. Two muscles um, uh, two muscles are for uh, pronation. So one is called pronator teres that is located proximally and this one is called pronator quadratus that is located distally. And uh, one muscle that is uh, for supination and that's called supinator muscle that is located proximally. And if you guys remember supination, these two muscles, uh, these two bones are parallel to each other, and in pronation, they cross each other. So in supination, the palm of the hand is located anteriorly, and in the pronation, the palm of the hand is located posteriorly. 
these are the muscles of the hand look at an anterior view uh, so th there's some muscles in the thumb the names are obvious so this is abductor pollicis brevis you had abductor pollicis longus there um, before so this is the, the, the brevis one uh, this is the opponent's pollicis uh, that is called opposition of the fingers uh, this is flexor pollicis brevis and this is called abductor policy so that's uh, affecting the the thumb these are called the lumbricals okay and uh, these are the tendons and uh, the tendons that are um, coming from the wrist muscle so the flexor digitorum uh, it can be flexor digitorum superficialis or um, uh, profundus the superficialis one is, is ends up in this uh, intermediate uh, phalanx and uh, the, the profundus one it ends up in the distal phalanges or the digits uh, here you have some muscles for the little finger so you have you have abductor digiti minimi you have the flexor digiti minimi brevis and you have the opponent's digiti minimi so as you can see the abductors are located uh, more superficially um, and uh, more laterally I should say or more medially than the, the flexor muscles. So flexor muscles are more uh, toward the middle of the hand. You also have some uh, different tendons here that you can see this is the tendon of palmaris longus so it ends up in the hand area, palm of the hand and you have the flexor carpi radialis and flexor carpi ulnaris so these are the ones that are ending up uh, in the carpal bones this is the back of the hand um, so you see different tendons here um, these are the extensor digitorum so going to all four fingers and this one is going also to extensor digiti minimi extensor indices is also there um, and the, these muscles that, that you see, uh, these are called interosei. So this is interosseous is the uh, interosseous is the singular form, and interossei is the plural form. Uh, you have a lot of different tendons here. Uh, so uh, this is the tendon of the extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis here, and uh, extensor carpi radialis you have these two muscles uh, tendons here extensor carpi ulnaris you also have it here um, and this one is called extensor retinaculum this is like a, a wristband and there's also you have the um, flexor retinaculum there the flexor retinaculum is actually more important if i go back it's not shown here in this image Unfortunately, uh, yeah, it goes all the way. Well, it's not shown again here. Um, so, uh, but um, it should be around this area. And it's really important. Uh, when we get to the nervous system, I will talk about it. So, it compresses a nerve here. Okay, so uh, flexor retinaculum is in that area. It's actually partially shown here. This, this is partially, it's actually uh, all the way from here to here. Okay, these are the muscles of the hip, uh, girdles, and uh, lower limb. Um, so the, when you have the gluteal muscle, this is the gluteus maximus. Uh, that can cause extension of the hip. And uh, uh, lateral rotation of the hip. These are called the gluteus medius. Uh, this muscle and this muscle. Okay, gluteus medius, the different uh, views, same muscle. This is gluteus medius, gluteus medius, this is the gluteus medius. And deep you have the gluteus minimus, that, that uh, just deeper than this area, but you cannot see it in this view. And gluteus medius and minimus can cause abduction and medial rotation of the hip joint. You also have the tensor fascia latte, 
and this is also called flexion of the hip joint. Uh, so these are the four gluteal group muscles. Uh, then you have some other muscles here uh, that you can see, but also I have it in a different view. Uh, so you have the rectus femoris and vastus lateralis. These two muscles are part of quadriceps muscles. And you have the biceps femoris muscles. You have the two heads, and this is part of the hamstring muscles. Um, and this one that you see, this is called the uh, iliotibial tract, it's starting from the ilium all the way to tibia. Uh, and uh, uh, that is uh, uh, just for a stabilize, stabilization um, of that area. Okay, so the slide is not moving forward. Okay, so now the slide is moving. Okay, so again you can see the gluteal group muscles. Uh, this is the gluteus maximus here, the scat here, uh, and the gluteus medius, and gluteus minimus deep, and tensor fascia lattice. So there's four uh, muscles that you can see it here. And then there is another group that you see is called iliopsoas muscles. And this is a combination of two muscles. One is called psoas major and, and the other one is called uh, iliacus. So uh, these two muscles cause flexion um, of the hip joint. Okay, flexion of the hip joint. And psoas muscle also cause flexion of the uh, lumbar area. Okay, flexion of the spine and the lumbar area. Uh, then as you have the lateral rotator group muscles. So um, this is called piriformis. So this is a group called lateral rotation of the hip. Uh, piriformis, so you can see it in the background. Um, superior and inferior gemellus muscles. In the middle you have the obturator internus. So this is, you see it from the posterior view, obturators internus, um, which also you can see it here, and obturators externus, that you can see it from the anterior view, okay? So uh, then you have the quadratus femoris muscle, quadratus femoris. So all of them cause rotation of the hip laterally. Uh, you also have adductor group that is called adduction of the uh, hip joint. So this is the pectineus muscle. Okay, uh, this is gracilis. So this is located most medially, uh, and then is adductor magnus, which is really big. Adductor magnus at the background, adductor longus, and adductor brevis. So all of them will cause adduction of the hip toward the midline. Um, okay, so this is the anterior view of the uh, thigh. So you can see some adductor muscles and also some quadriceps muscles. So this is the gracilis. This is adductor magnus, not labeled, so if you want to label it. Uh, this is adductor longus there. Uh, pectineus muscle is there. You cannot see adductor minor uh, here. Uh, so then is, uh, you can see iliopsoas muscle. Iliopsoas muscles uh, just passing below the in, in green ligament, which is an important ligament, uh, starting from anterior superior iliac spine all the way to the pubic tubercle. Um, you also have the uh, sartorius muscle, which is the longest muscle, and that will cause flexion of the hip and also flexion of the knee. Then is the quadriceps muscles that uh, cause extension of the knee. So this is the uh, uh, rectus femoris, okay, this is vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and we'll also there is another one, it's called vastus intermedius, but um, that muscle you have to remove the uh, rectus femoris to see the, re, the name is called uh, once again vector, uh, vastus intermedius. The, these muscles also cause uh, flexion of the hip, okay, extension of the knee, flexion of the hip. 
from the back you can see gluteus maximus and medius but these muscles are called uh, hamstring muscles okay you also see a couple of adductor muscles um, so the hamstring muscles uh, this is the uh, biceps femoris so the two heads of biceps femoris uh, and this is called semitendinosus and this is called semimembranosus muscles so three of them these are called hamstring muscles that will cause extension of the hip and flexion of the uh, knee these a uh, couple of other muscles uh, which i showed it to you before uh, it's repetition here so this is gracilis and adductor magnus you can see from the posterior view they cause adduction of the hip joint uh, there is also some other muscles are here that is not part of the um, uh, you know hamstring muscles and uh, one of them is this one this is called popliteus muscle um, and another one is called sartorius muscle that is uh, located anteriorly they, they too cause flexion of the knee but they are not part of the hamstring muscles and uh, here is the muscles of the legs so superficially you can see uh, gast gastronemius or gastrocnemius both, both pronunciations are correct has two heads, um, uh, so uh, gast gastrocnemius cause flexion of the uh, knee and also cause plantar flexion. Okay, if you remove this, uh, then you can get uh, some other muscles, what is called plantaris, uh, that can cause flexion of the knee and plantar flexion of the ankle area. Another muscle is called popliteus that is located behind the knee that can cause flexion of the knee and another, and another muscle is called soleus that can also cause um, flexion of the uh, uh, plantar area or plantar flexion okay plantar flexion also anatomically is called ankle ex extension so the same thing ankle extension is the same thing as plantar flexion okay uh, gastrocnemius uh, soleus and another muscle that is called the uh, tibialis posterior um, and these three muscles also cause uh, inversion of the knee inversion of the uh, foot I mean inversion of the foot okay More, moving the foot medially uh, tibialis posterior also cause uh, plantar flexion so there are multiple muscles that can cause plantar flexion. You have gastrocnemius, you have the plantaris, you have soleus, and you have tibialis posterior. You also have two other muscles, fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. Okay, these two muscles also cause plantar flexion. For inversion, okay, you have the uh, gastrocnemius, you have soleus, and you have tibialis. And there's a couple of uh, muscles that can cause eversion, so moving the foot outward, and these are called fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. A um, couple of muscles that are there for moving the, the, the toes. Uh, so this is the flexor digitorum longus, uh, these are the tendons, and this is the muscle, uh, and flexor hallucis longus that is come, uh, going to the big toe helix is the big toe so uh, these uh, these two muscles cause flexion of the um, toes this is the anterior view so in the anterior view you can see tibialis anterior located in the very close to the tibia and that can cause dorsal flexion okay uh, there is also extensor digitorum longus is there uh, and that can cause extension of the, the toes and extensor hallucis longus is there and that goes to the big toe and cause extension of the big toe and you also have these uh, retinaculae uh, so these are called extensor retinaculae that's located on the anterior part of the ankle these are the side views of the leg area so you can see gastrocnemius soleus below that both of them together makes the calcaneal or achilles tendon both of them together 
you have fibularis longus and fibularis bravus here and anteriorly you have the tibialis anterior and then you have the extensor digitorum longus uh, muscle is there and extensor hallucis it's a little bit difficult to see uh, here is tibialis anterior you can see it and posteriorly gastrocnemius and soleus is um, there and also tibialis posterior is easy to see uh, so this is the extensor retinaculum again um, but for the uh, in fear, uh, for the flexor retinaculum, you have to see it in a different view. Okay. Um, so again, this is the extensor retinaculum. So they have the superior one and then you have the inferior one. Uh, some muscles are, that are there. Um, so uh, this this one is called extensor hallucis bravis. So called extension of the. Uh, big two, and uh, this is the extensor hallucis longus, so it's coming from the leg. Uh, these ones that you see, this is like an oblique uh, view. Uh, this is extensor digitorum uh, bravus, these ones, and uh, these ones that you see, these distendons are extensor digitorum longus, okay? And so these are the longest ones, extensor digitorum and uh, extensor digitorum. Um, Bravus is these ones. Uh, and uh, these are the dorsal inter RCI muscles between the between the bones. Um, okay. Uh, then the plantar surface of the, the foot. So you have the important muscle here, it's called flexor digitorum bravus, that is located above the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus that is coming from the back of the uh, leg area. Um, you also have some muscles for the big two. Uh, so this is the abductor and this is the flexor, halluses. And for the small two, you also have the uh, flexor here uh, and the abductor here for the digit minimum. So if you remove the flexor digitorum bravus, the important muscle that you see here, that is called the quadratus plantae, okay, quadratus plantae. Um, also uh, superficial to quadratus plantae and uh, flexor digitorum bravus, you see the plantar aponeurosis, that is a supporting uh, connective tissue for the uh, plantar surface of the foot. You also see these ones, and these are the lumbricals, similar to the hand. You have lumbricals in the foot. And if you have any question, uh, please ask me. Thank you.